How you doing YouTube? Nick Patap here from Next Gen Rehabilitation and in today's video I'm going to be going over uh, what specifically is a clinical exercise physiologist. So I get asked this question quite a bit. Nick, uh, you're a clinical exercise physiologist but what do you specifically do? So uh, hopefully in this video I'm able to answer some of those questions. Now I'm not going to get too much into the education and the certification process. If you're interested in that let me know and I can make a, uh, a follow-up uh, video about that. Now, what is a clinical exercise physiologist? Basically, a clinical exercise physiologist is a healthcare professional that deals with and provides exercise prescription to people that are um, suffering from some sort of chronic disease. So that chronic disease can be heart disease, um, it can be pulmonary disease, metabolic disease, um, a combination of all of those, diabetes, uh, obesity, um, they may have high risk factors for developing diseases such as blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, some more neurological diseases such as my, uh, fibromyalgia. So our goal is to take that disease uh, into account, um, really understand it, um, interpret specific tests, interpret uh, or understand how certain medications interact in the body and how uh, they might potentially have an output um, on exercise protocol and with all this information we uh, we design an exercise prescription for the individual now me specifically i work in a cardiac rehab setting so i work specifically with individuals that have had some sort of um, heart issue or uh, they're battling a heart issue so for example i work with individuals that have been through um, open heart surgery valve issues um, I work with individuals and patients that have had um, heart transplants, um, they maybe have some sort of cardiomyopathy, uh, heart failure, arrhythmia issues, atrial fibrillation, um, they may have suffered cardiac arrest. So my goal as an exercise physiologist, A, is to first off understand the individual's diagnosis and etiology to their disease. So having a uh, understanding of what the person's coming in with for example um, what are signs and symptoms of someone that has heart failure what are some things that we should be looking out for weight gain um, what are things that we the individual needs to be restricting fluid intake sodium intake um, what are some of the medications that individuals taking in order to combat um, some of the effects of their heart failure so basically in heart failure the patient's heart is not pumping to its um, optimal capacity therefore the individual is going to get fatigued a lot quicker right and in order for them to increase this output of um, their heart's capacity they're going to be on uh, quite a few medications all right so first off um, we want to understand the etiology if they're coming in with heart disease um, coronary artery disease to be more specific um, which arteries were blocked um, did they have bypass surgery done? Did they have stents put in? What kind of stent? Um, are they on any sort of antiplatelet therapy? Um, so we need to understand that I uh, ideology. Do they still feel um, any sort of chest tightness when they exert themselves? Were there any blockages that the surgeon um, didn't touch um, or that weren't stented because they weren't significant that could potentially lead to issues later on? Um, so understanding the etiology is very significant in, in, in our role because that's going to help us um, better tailor an exercise prescription for our patients. Now that's the first thing. The second thing we need to uh, have a really good grasp on is understanding um, tests. Um, more specifically, uh, testing for um, specific things such as angiogram. So an angiogram is a snapshot of the arteries of the heart. Um, we need to be able to read the, the actual tree angiogram tree there that shows us um, which arteries were blocked, uh, which arteries are stented, which arteries are still potentially blocked. Um, another test may be an echocardiogram. How well does this individual's heart pump? How well are the valves working? How much blood is being pumped out um, of that left ventricle per beat? Um, are there any abnormal, uh, abnormal motions? Are the ventricles the correct size? Um, understanding stress tests so excuse me being able to interpret ECG readings um, understanding what a certain uh, rhythm issues arrhythmias look like um, atrial fibrillation uh, atrial flutter 
knowing what bundle bl branch blocks look like um, because these things come into effect not only for individuals you know that may be battling uh, uh, some sort of atrial fibrillation but um, knowing the signs to look out for if for example there are patients in a class and they might have never had any symptoms and any issues but all of no uh, all of a sudden they're starting to experience chest tightness if we run over to the computer we see some sd changes that's something that we need to have knowledge on Okay, so understanding the diagnosis of uh, the cardiovascular history first, understanding certain test protocols, um, and then also understanding medication interaction. So a lot of our patients, uh, most of our patients coming to the clinic are on some sort of medication, whether it be a statin, whether it be a, cholesterol, or a, a blood thinner medication, whether it be a blood pressure medication, um, whether it be a rate control medication. So we need to understand how these things interact in the body and how they're going to affect the individual's uh, ability to exercise okay and then on top of all of that let's get to know the individual's lifestyle okay are they currently exercising uh, what are some other issues they may have had in their life um, outside of cardiovascular history right are they um do they have any injuries do they have musculoskeletal limitations do they have other risk factors that will uh, potentially uh, cause harm in the future if not taken care of. These may include things like uh, diabetes and, and sugar control, um, obesity, blood pressure. Um, so diet, right? Are they living a sedentary lifestyle? Uh, do they have high alcohol intake? So cardiac rehab um, and as, as an exercise physiologist, we take all these things into account and we want to prescribe them exercises um, based on all this information we have. How hard are they going to be working? What are some target heart rates we want them to be trying to achieve to help build up their heart's capacity? Um, what are some restrictions that the patient can do based on you know what or whatever surgery they had or um, you know if they've had valve replacement? Are there certain isometric exercises that, that they can do because it puts too much pressure on the heart? So these are the sort of things that we need to first know, and then from here we can go ahead and uh, create a proper exercise prescription. Now the exercise prescription is one aspect of, of our job. Um, another aspect of our job is, is the lifestyle change aspect, right? So you kind of heard me allude to it a little bit earlier. Um, lifestyle change is huge. So not only do we want to help them start exercising more, understand exercise, what kind of exercises they should be doing, but if they're an individual that, you know, is battling obesity or they are battling issues with their diabetes, they can't control their sugars as well as they should be. Um, they're, maybe they're battling psychosocial uh, issues, um, depression, anxiety after having surgery. You know, is this type of thing going to happen again? Um, how hard am I able to push myself? So, um, dietary issues right am i eating healthy and the way i'm eating right now is it sustainable to prevent another heart issue from happening again so all these factors also come into play now we aren't necessarily prescribing you know nutrition plans or giving um psychosocial advice uh, our goal is to understand that these problems may be occurring in the client and then we refer them off to the uh, correct um, professional to to help them deal with those situations and that's where the intertwined team aspect comes in so on top of doing the exercise prescription that's our main goal interpreting the tests um, following up um, seeing how their progress is going we also collaborate very closely with dietitians um, social workers, psychiatrists, um, nurses, cardiologists, um, in trying to make the best plan for the patient um, so they have essentially the best experience when they come through a cardiac rehab setting. So a lot of the time when, when the patient comes through, it's, it's a scary situation, right? They've, they've been through something that um, potentially almost killed them, um, survived went through the surgery, and now they're on the road to recovery. Uh, the biggest question they have, at least in my um, history of kind of doing this, is how hard can I push myself without having something significant happen to me? And even if we take it back a little bit, it's, it's just psychologically resetting the mind there to say, you know what, we're going to exercise you, we're going to do it in a nice, safe manner, but we're going to do it in a way where you feel comfortable and if there's anything that you're finding your body to not really um, be comfortable with, then we're going to tailor it a little bit lower, all right? So um, we do the exercise prescriptions and on, uh, and another thing we also do is um, 
we may be leading some of the exercise classes, right? So depending on the setting you're in, um, we're taking individuals through different uh, weight training exercises, different stretches, different flexibility exercises. Um, we're making sure that the individual is correctly performing techniques. So prescribing exercises, teaching them how to use certain pieces of equipment, treadmills, new steps, um, bikes, that sort of thing putting them through a uh, fitness routine that incorporates the major components, flexibility, aerobics, uh, strength training, and then hopefully um, helps with some body composition issues if they do have it. Um, and then just continuing to, to follow up, right? In certain settings, we may be involved in, in the stress testing protocol. So um, when the individual comes in, we do a, we do a stress test. Um, the cardiac tech usually runs a stress test, but we're in the room looking for any abnormalities as well. Um, and also to, to gauge how much is this individual able to push themselves um, so that they can, you know, sustain a specific level of in, uh, intensity. And if they can't, how can us as exercise physiologists create a program and then a prescription for them so that they, they potentially can start at a baseline and then build up off of that. Um, another thing we do is uh, the intake processes and uh, book prepping. So when an individual uh, is coming in for their initial intake, we need to prep their charts. So prepping charts means going through the medical records, uh, pulling data that's relevant to the, uh, our role as an exercise physiologist, again, going over their diagnosis, um, past medical history, what specifically has happened um, in terms of heart health, do they have risk factors for another issue um, in, in uh, having a coronary uh, event, uh, cardiac event, sorry. Um, what kind of tests uh, have been uh, performed on these individuals, stress tests, echoes, Holter monitors, uh, maybe scans, um, have they had any ultrasounds done. Uh, looking at doctor consultations, because a lot of the times in the, in the consultation, most of the doctors will say specifically um, what they want us to be uh, working on with the uh, patient as well as a little bit of a follow-up after surgery, how they've been doing mentally, physically. Um, so taking all that information, we put it into our into our report. And then when the patient actually comes in, we almost just reiterate um, and confirm that these are the things that we've seen in your, in your file. If there's any changes, let us know. Um, and then also get a sense of where they're at um, from, uh, from a personal basis, right? I mean, you want to build up that rapport. This person's coming to you because they want to essentially increase their well-being and, and start making a change in their lifestyle, right? So um, providing <clears throat> information is another key for us as exercise physiologists. Um, in that setting, we're going to get to know them, what their lifestyle is like, um, and, and start giving little hints on, okay, you know what, we can work on the diet, we can work on um, weight loss, we can work on improving your strength. Um, and then when they... After that intake, we take that information, um, we make an initial exercise prescription for them, and then in their first class, um, we explain to the patient, okay, so based on how you did on your test, based on the medication you're taking, based on the history you gave me, I feel that this is probably the best exercise prescription for you. Um, this is the target heart rate, so you want to stay in. This is how you should feel when you exercise. Uh, we're going to limit shoulder motions because you might have had a surgery. Um, we're going to try to strengthen your legs because you've been uh, immobile or you've been using a walker or that sort of stuff. So um, initially, let's start with exercise one to two times a week. You're going to be exercising with us twice a year, and then maybe a month down the road, we can start increasing that protocol, right? So what I like telling people is, you know, after a month, you feel comfortable Maybe we can start incorporating, you know, a walk, a daily walk um, every three, two, three days or something like that. Or instead of just doing weights here once a week, I can give you a routine and you can, you know, use water bottles or light weights at home and do a routine there. So um, that's generally kind of how a, a day in the life of an exercise physiologist uh, does look, at least in my setting as a cardiac rehab um, exercise physiologist. Uh, if there's anything else you would like me to cover, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask. And hopefully you get something from this video. Uh, if you did like it and you feel someone else would uh, benefit from it, please share. And we will see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys.